How you going guys and welcome to this week's um, View It For Me video um, where we just review anything and everything, things that I choose, things that you choose and things that get sent out and like all the videos if I get something sent out I'll let you know this is one that has been sent out so uh, it's the EcoFlow Delta um, and it's a power pack like a solar generator so like all I'll get rid of the boring stuff first um, sizes and all the specs and and things like that and we'll see what this bad boy can actually do I'll measure it in its bag it's it's the same size it's not going to make a difference but so across um, we are about 410 across width is about 220 height 200 and say 80 the weight of this bad boy is about 14 kilos has a 24 month warranty the size of it is um 1260 watt hours so equivalent to uh, amp hours would be about 105 give or take so i'll open her up and i'll show you what comes with it um i don't mind the bag i like it because like i said i can what what i use with it packs into it um so what comes with it obviously all your paperwork and stuff like that yeah, I think the warranty card, like I said, 24 month warranty. AC charger lead. The bonus with this thing is there's no brick. It just plugs straight into it. And your DC charging lead for your car. Your car and your solar charger lead are two different things. It doesn't come with the solar lead. Uh, you got to get that separate, but it does come with your charger lead for your car. So it has your three different inputs, um, ways you can charge it. So you can obviously charge it one, with your AC charger. Two, you can charge it with your car charger. You can plug it into your vehicle as you're driving. The other way is your solar input, so you can charge it from solar. The sum of the specs on ways you can charge it. So we'll start off with the um, AC charger. So it has a max charge of um, input of 1200 watt. So this thing can go from zero to 80% charge in about an hour, and I think the rest of it's so all up is about an hour and a half it can charge and um which is yeah pretty pretty quick just ha has its advantages and it doesn't also but i'll get to that so you you know you might get away with not having to um have a solar or a car charger you might get away if you just want to use it for a day or two um it may run your fridge for that long depending on you know where your fridge is located if you got it in the shade and no, it helps it out down south. I reckon it'd have no troubles, especially in the winter time. Um, but you know, up here right now is it was when you realise if your um, power system's enough to to cope, because going from down there and coming up here, worst possible time for solar and everything, because it is hot. The sun might be good and and blasting away, but yeah, they just once it reads a, um, reaches a certain temperature, the old solar efficiency isn't as good. So that's probably something to keep in mind. But yeah, um, definitely a quick charger. Really fast charging from AC. Car charger. So drops down a bit with your car charger. Can any, I think it's about, I maxed it out about 98 watts, um, which is not a great deal. And if this thing's down to, which it did, down to about 60%, takes a real long time to charge it with just your um, car charger. Maybe if you're down to about 80%, it might be efficient enough for you to plug it into your 12-volt um, charger if you don't have a solar or access to an inverter big enough for mains power to charge it from AC. So, but still handy to have. If you're just driving in the car and you want to plug it in, you've got a big day's drive, still handy to have. It helps out. Most efficient way of charging it, other than the AC charger, would be solar input. So, solar input, you have a max of... Uh, 400 watt solar at 10 amp um, voltage is good it ranges from I think it's 10 to 65 volt um, that you can put into it another good thing is you don't have to have their solar panels you can have any solar panel you just need the right lead which is has the same um, plug as that on one end and then the other side just goes to your two um, Oh, what are they called? The MC4s, I think they are. The two solar panel clippies. <laughs> so, and then you can run any solar you want. Um, any, any one downfall I felt about the, the leads, this one's probably not too bad because it's only about 100 watt max anyway. But it's the same 
same thickness for your um, solar lead. And if you're going to run 400 watt of solar through a lead, you know, yay, small. It, I just thought it was a bit bit of an underkill. It'd probably be good if they had a bit heavier gauge wire. You know, I'm sure they've done their homework, but um, just from my experience, I like having heavy leads, especially I like to run long distance. So the heavier, the better, because there is voltage drop. But yeah, that's, that's just my opinion as well. But it does work. I have had it on solar. The lead that it comes with is only a short one. So this really had to be out with the solar panel as well, which is probably not the best thing because you don't really want to worry about it being in the sun. Um, you'd rather have it tucked away hiding, so I'd rather have an extension for the solar. So that's just, a, yeah, something to jot down as well, which they do sell extensions, um, longer leads, um, but I can't see it being too hard to make if you just got their solar lead as a um, patch lead, make up your own extension, that might be an option as well. The most efficient way to charge it other than ac is definitely solar how much solar would i go for i would definitely go max input i have been running it and just i've only got a 160 watt panel but i've got another one coming it's 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 their actual panel as well it's an EcoFlow panel like i said you can run any panel with it uh, i just like their panels they are good and they are waterproof some aren't waterproof and these ones like a fold up ones definitely i would go max input because there was times that but i'm running big loads on it i'll tell you i'll explain what i was running but that just doing what i was doing made me think well i definitely need max input i can't get away with just you know 160 watt panel it was okay when i was any dropping it down to about the 80 percent for the first night or two but then over time i was dropping it more and more because it just wasn't getting fully charged enough via the one panel so i would definitely go max input which is your um yeah 400 watt or 65 volt um so as long as you don't go over your voltage you know you're, you're laughing if you have more soul it doesn't matter it can any handle the 10 watts so after that it just will it won't do anything uh 10 amps sorry so after it gets above that it just can't do anything with it but as long as you're you're in your right voltages uh, it does have the obviously built-in um, solar regulator get unregulated solar panels if you want to plug into it that's one thing i should mention you don't want a regulated panel this already has a regulator built into it so you can just run your solar panels straight into it and yeah it, do, it does the rest does a good job at that too so this thing has an ac output of 1800 watt which can run a lot of things and a surge of uh, 3100 watt it is a pure sine wave inverter as well so you can charge laptops and all your sensitive sort of sort of things as well but it has an 1800 watt output of it i've been running an induction cooker and it's it's been going really good it, i've cooked meals or i've cooked full on meals like chicken chicken being the longest because it takes the longest i've done pastas you know so you got to boil your water for your pasta then cook your mince and everything easy things are sausages long steaks anything like that it's just when you're doing meals that you have to do your pasta or rice then plus your mains that's what takes it out of it and that's what um, was dropping it down below the 80 percent other than that your snags and stuff like that it wouldn't drop below that the only problem i had was over time with not having enough solar it would slowly drop down on me so that's been like i said i figured you need max solar for what i'm doing anyway that's for what i want to do with it it just being able to run an induction cooker saves me a lot of hassle with your gas and stuff like that so well this is is definitely a trial and error we have got four inputs ac inputs plus down the bottom we have a, a um like a cigarette plug and run your fridges uh it is regulated too some of these on know aren't regulated but this one is regulated so you don't got a problem with it wrecking any uh, appliances that you plug into it say lights fridges whatever you want to run off that it has a 1260 uh like i was saying watt hour which is not all usable i guess because you still got to think of the functions like the fans uh your lcd display it all turns off after a while to help save power but then you got you know because it's an inverter it's going to take power as well because you're converting that uh, dc into ac turn him around on the front so you have your two usb a inputs you got two more usb a style but fast charging inputs then you got usb c down the bottom two of them 
you got your on button for all your DC power, your mains on button down the bottom of that, and also you have your on button for your AC power at the back. So you don't have to have your inverter on if you just want to use it for your um, like your, your DC sort of thing. So that'll save power as well by not having the AC on if you don't want to use your AC. If you purely just got it for your dual battery system in your car and you just want to run your fridge or charge some of your stuff. So it has a neat little screen on the front. Turn it on. You won't be able to really see it properly because I know it just flickers. But when you actually plug stuff in, it'll calculate. So it's like got a shunt built into it as well. It'll calculate and it'll give you an idea of um, how long it's going to run whatever's plugged in for. So the bigger the load, obviously, the less it's going to run it. But it'll tell you yeah, what, how many watts it's outputting and calculate it and tell you the percentage of the battery and how long and minutes or hours it's going to run for if you've got solar plugged in at the same time it also has an input and it tells you what inputs going into it and then that'll also like count towards so it might last a little bit longer because you also got power being put back into it as well and going up top we have fans no matter what when you got it plugged into mains your fans are going to be turned on because uh, it's such a big load vice versa same if you got something plugged in the ac output and it's a decent size load they'll turn on as well as matter of fact i think they turn on no matter what when there's something plugged into the ac but yeah just so you know it does put out a little bit of noise when the fans are going what I run off of it, I just did a camp trip away for about a week and I left all my gas appliances at home and I pretty much just took this and an induction cooker. So what this did is it did me, me coffee for water in the morning. Sometimes I would cook a feed like snags or something at lunchtime and then I'd cook every nighttime meal on it. How did it go? Went like a charm. Um, went really well. I, I didn't know how it was going to go because like I said it's only 1260 watt hour which is a, definitely a decent size but when you're running loads that I think the um, induction cooker I'm running on max output it was chewing oh, I think about 1450 or so watt so it, it was definitely drawing the power. On average I think after a whole meal I was cooking depends on what I was cooking like some meals were longer because once there I did chicken and, and I did rice so that was probably one of the longest meals I cooked because you had to boil the water for the rice cook the rice and then cook chicken which takes that little bit longer as well so that would definitely draw it down a little bit more but your steak stuff like that your sausages any meals like that no worries i think it got down doing meals like that it got down to about oh i think i don't know 80 percent 85 percent i think you boil me water i'd boil just enough water for me me coffee and i think that only chewed probably about all of five percent or something like that i'd every day after me coffee i'd take it out i put it in the sun it was then i realized how much solar i actually really needed for this thing first couple of days were okay because it, it wasn't dropping down as much and it's still getting enough charge but then i started getting cloudier days and the old you know it wasn't putting in as much because of the cloudy days so then i realized well i definitely need you know if not the max input another 160 watt panel would would be ideal for it for what i'm using it for anyway that's pretty much why i got something like this unit i would like to one day soon go away from the gas side of things and just go to electric just going to help me out a bit more um i've got a lot to set up as it is and and it's just practical i'm not worried about the wind then that's probably my biggest thing is just worrying about the wind it's not blowing the gas around which means it takes extra to cook the food it's not as hot on the bottom because the gas is blowing away i don't have to put shields up around me cooker i can just pull it out throw in the back of ute and bam she's done so it definitely was brilliant for when i was doing the ute camp and i think it'd be just as good looking at something like it to go in the camper trailer as well but i think i might need a bit more watt hour for the camper trailer um, just because i can't rely on it being charged every day another good thing about it right now we're in wet season the old power mains can drop in and out sometimes, especially when there's wild storms around. So I've been using it like a, um, what are they called, UIP, uninterrupted power system. So I just plug everything into this. So I'd charge my laptop from this when I'm editing or working on it or doing whatever. And I know the old power's not going to drop in and out on me. So that's, that's a bonus. Also, you know, if you like going camping and that, and you don't want to spend a fortune on a full-on setup in your rig, and you just want something easy because a bit of a tradie and you do that weekend stuff, 
stuff and you want to throw something in your ute, yep, it works, or even keep it in your ute. Um, but yeah, I just think having something like this would be a bit more practical. If you don't want to go to the extreme of setting it up, yep, they do cost a bit, but you think what's in it for the money, like, I think there would have been about two grand or so, but you've got a inverter built into it, an 1800 watt inverter. It's got a battery built into it, like, you know, about a 105 amp hour one. Or your charging docks, it's got a shunt telling you what you know what's left and what's going in and and how long it's going to last for it's got a solar input you know a solar regulator so all that all adds up it's got an ac charger obviously built into it you just need your cord and plugs it straight in and there's your battery charger so really all you need then is your is your fridge and yeah you you're pretty much laughing you know and even if you do have a setup rig and you just want that power pack that's portable hence like myself like i I'd like I said, I'd like to run induction. I'd like to change over, but I'm happy with my power setup and I don't really want to upgrade it because I've done enough to it. And what I'd like to do is probably, I feel that, okay, so the size of the gas bottle, I'm not chewing up any more room and the weight, I might be going a little bit heavier, but there's a lot more pros if I do go to the electric side of things. The size of the actual unit itself is going to be the nine kilo gas bottle, so that's fine. Uh, no, no gas hoses, no worrying about filling them up, all that sort of stuff. And then me cooker, the induction cookers are a hell of a lot lighter than you. I've got a wok burner, which is brilliant. I do like it, <laughs> but um, yeah, the induction cookers that I run are a lot lighter. I only got the one, but it's a lot lighter than than your um, gas ones. I um, I most likely will just go a, a unit like this probably a bit bigger for the camper trailer and most likely keep this for the ute i didn't have no intention of running the ute uh, induction in the ute because yeah i was just going to keep it simple but at the end of the day i think this is going to be simpler than having me gas canisters and me me um cooker and all that so that's how i'm going to run this thing anyway but like i said there's that many ways you can use this thing for probably some of the downfalls about it that i, I don't kind of like is charging so the any efficient way is obviously solar for me because I don't always have mains and I'd like to be able to charge it for mains but my inverter in the camper trail and definitely the inverter in my ute is not big enough to, to charge this thing for the amount of power it can chew. I'd like to have a function where you can choose your um, uh, output levels, your input levels, sorry. So instead of just having it 1200 max or whatnot, I'd like to be able to say if you had a, a 500, then a 900, then your 1200 watt, I'd like to be able to choose a wattage and then it, it may chew a lot from my si system, definitely. But it's, it's just another option and I can have it on its lowest setting. I can wait if the trailer batteries are fully charged, like, you know, which they usually are, uh, not even at lunchtime. Then I've got that excess power that I'm just losing for nothing. So then that's where this thing could come in handy. I could plug it straight in and use the rest of that power that I'm pretty much dumping anyway to uh, charge this. So that, that's probably the only thing. Um, yeah, that and, that and I was, like I said, I was a bit worried about the leads being so thin but they seem to do the job that was with the one 160 it's going to be interesting to see when i've got two 160 watt panels running through the same size lead and another thing i do want to have an extension uh, but yeah and probably the only other downfall a bit of a con about it is you've only got 800 cycles at fully fully charged so after them 800 cycles you may only have about 80 percent of its total watt hour capacity you know after that then it'll it'll drop yeah down to about 80 percent which 800 times is still a fair bit of times you know if you're taking our weekends here and there but for someone doing it full time you'd chew through it a little bit more but like i said it's not dead after 800 cycles it just it won't have its full so it may only have about what 900 watt hours in it, 1000 watt hours in it after you're uh, about 800 cycles. So that's just something else to keep in mind as well. Uh, well I hope you enjoyed this week's um, little view it for me vid. Um, yeah, I, I can't really tell you much more about it. Also, I will drop a link in the description, guys. Uh, if you do, it's not costing you anything more. It just I get a little bit of a um, percentage from the EcoFlow mob if you purchase through my little link. Uh, it's not something I can retire on, believe me, but every little bit helps. So if you, yeah, if you are looking at something, it'd be pretty cool if you could yeah, get it through the link. Go well, then. Too easy. Catch you, Zay. Mm -hmm.